All right. So with that said, let's go to your next uh, or your most recent book, rather, The Family Firm. So the one of the central concepts of this book is that there are some important similarities between running a business and running a family and that that can be a useful framework. So can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So so this is really a book about kind of management of a, a family life with children who have a lot of stuff to do, um, which increasingly seems to be true of many of us as our children, um, as our children age. Uh, and one of the things that I notice about this is that we are not always very deliberate about the decisions we make inside our, our houses, inside our families in, in a way that we are, that we are t- some of us quite deliberate about the choices we make at work. Um, and so, so the, the central argument is that you should, you should approach your family decisions deliberately. And that means sort of thinking carefully through the both like overall, what do you want your, your big picture of your life to look like? You know, what do you want to be kind of doing every day? And then also when large decisions come up that they should be made in a way that is a little more structured than we sometimes, um, than we sometimes do. Um, so there's a lot of, we can talk about sort of the the details of, of this, but, you know, in, in some ways I, I, I almost think this is a little bit of an argument for taking taking the emotion out of a lot of like separating the kind of logistical like management side of of having you know two kids and two jobs or two kids and one job or three jobs and nine kids whatever number thing it is sort of take a little bit of the emotion out of that and use use your sort of like logical brain for some of your decision making and separate that out from from the um you know from from the kind of emotional part of you you love your family because i think sometimes we think like well because i love these people it will all work out and and one of the things they say in the book is like i i like i could love you and also want you to update my asana tasks to let me know what you're done with and those like don't have to be in conflict yeah so th- there's this idea in your book of having sort of an overriding mission statement or or sort of value statement for your family that can help guide you through decisions where you're weighing trade-offs or, or something like that and that that's an interesting one to me because I, I think it'd be very difficult to actually come up with a, a mission statement for a family and it seems like it would seem like and, and we'll talk much more about this about parenting styles, but um, how does one craft a mission statement for a family when uh, the children sort of don't know who they are and don't know what they want yet? And um, so any any mission statement risks running into their evolving preferences and values that are, are very different, right? So how, how do you think about that? So I think about that in, in that all of this stuff is, is evolving. So, you know, you're going to like, what you know, the, the idea in a lot of this is to say, you're going to have to revisit this with some, you know, with some regularity and, and even putting aside the mission statement, all of the kinds of choices you're going to make are going to be, there's going to be a time to involve your, your kids in them and a time not to involve your kids. Right. So when your kid is one, they probably don't have a lot of feelings about your family mission or like whether you should have dinner together or like how many sports they should do or whatever it is. When your kid is 11, they may have thoughts on all of those things. So, and there's a sense in which it's an, it's a kind of an opportunity to, to sort of at, with, at some points, sit down and think about what you want to be accomplishing as a, as a family. But I will say, you know, on the case, on the sort of topic, the broad topic of the mission statement, for some people, when I talk to them about this, they're like, yeah, love the idea. Like if we, if we just had, like, we could sit down, we could, we'd have a mission statement and that really resonated. And I want to like, I, you know, and once we have that, then we can go back to it and we can say like, what's important to us. And some people are like, I, I, this is st- like, I don't want a mission. Like, what is that? I don't have a mission statement. <laughs> But for some of those people, the idea of, of, okay, well, just tell me what are the three things you want to do every day? Like, don't tell me your mission. Don't tell me, just tell me like in your family, like, what are the three things you think are most important? Or what are the three things you want to, like, tell me something very practical. Like I want to have dinner together. Okay. So that's like, that's, so that's not, that's not a mission statement, but that's like, that's a concrete thing that we can, we can sort of organize around that we can say, you know, this is a really important value value for me. So I think there's kind of the one line mission statement and then there's the broad idea 
that we need to say the things that we are that are important to us and we should say them out loud to the other decision makers in in the family because once we do that then we are able to make sort of better collective decisions that are respectful of the things that we find most important yeah uh, another thing you talk about in the book and i think uh it's something other people have noted as well is the rising complexity of having a family relative to uh, what it was like in the past. Uh, part of this has to do with the credentials arms race between uh, parents, uh, uh, you know, middle and upper middle class parents. Part of it has to do with the decline of families living with you know, three generations in the same household uh, so that grandparents can act like babysitters. Um, so it's like, you know, it's the move to the nuclear family to just two parents doing everything for the kids while also potentially both working and, and the rise of, you know, extracurriculars being a, a really like a job. Yeah. Like yeah. A, key, a key signifier to every you know, every, every program your kid wants to get into up to and beyond college. So, um, you know, given that this is, this is sort of the landscape where we're entering, is that part of what's motivating uh, you, you to say, like, this makes sense to treat this, uh, to, to import some business principles into, into this game? Sort, I would say sort of. So I think, you know, some of the time when you say like my, the theme of my book is treat your family like a firm. Um, people read that as, you know, use like use spreadsheets to get more stuff in. Like if only you had a better spreadsheet, they could be doing more extracurriculars. Like you could fit in the 30 minutes in there. That's wasted. It's just garbage time. They could be learning a different instrument. Um, and I think that's in some ways like really not, not the, the point. Um, I think the point is much more that um, that because there are so many of these pressures, uh, particularly around sort of like stuff that your kid needs to do in order to achieve blah, 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 blah um, that people add and add and add in to, to sort of more and more things without thinking about how those are, how all of those decisions are linked, right? So you, you say yes to travel soccer. You say you like, you know, yeah, of course we're gonna do travel soccer. Like we're, we're in so we invested in soccer and that's going to need a high school, you know, and maybe that's a good choice, but you should make that choice recognizing that travel soccer is four days a week and you know every other weekend for the entire weekend and that it interferes with that it's the same time that you were planning to have dinner as a family so maybe it's a good decision but it's not separate from the decision about whether you want to have dinner as a family or have your weekends free or or whatever it is and so that there's a sense in which in I, I kind of think of the message not as use spreadsheets to do more but use like deliberate decision making to potentially do less and to potentially sort of back off some of this and say, you know what, like it, it, it may, it, we want to really evaluate how important are these things actually in practice for what we're trying to, to achieve and how much do they maybe sometimes get in the way of the, the family we want to build or the, or the life that we want to craft. And I'm, I'm frankly not sure that, uh, you know, all of this extracurricular investment is in fact as important as people think it is for, you know, whatever kind of life success we're trying to, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to build. And I think it's a, at a minimum useful for people to think pretty carefully about that before they just sort of go off the like millions of extracurricular deep end. <laughs> <laughs>